This is my last vlog. I'm done. No, I'm totally joking. This is not my last vlog at all. I don't even know if I'll ever stop making vlogs. I have way too many things to talk about. I think I would have to be physically incapable before I stop making these. So yes, if all goes well, I'm only getting started. But this vlog does mark the end of something for me. And I'll explain what that is. A bit of context first. I started making vlogs in November 2023. And my purpose for those vlogs was to promote my social network, notice. My approach was quite simple and logical. Explain what I believe was wrong with current social media platforms and also present how I'm attempting to solve these issues by building my own network. I explained that the major reasons why social networks are so toxic and damaging for human flourishing were the lack of self-sovereign identity, the lack of authenticity on social networks, the lack of online community safety, the aggressive exploitation of human information and attention, the encouragement towards narcissism. These vlogs allowed me to make my points on one hand and I now feel very strongly about continuing my efforts with notice, but they also helped me find a new passion. I actually love making vlogs. When I started going through the process of planning, producing, recording, editing, releasing my first videos, I felt fulfilled in a very unique way. I had an undeniable sense that this wasn't going to be something for promoting notice only. The way I see it, I could be making vlogs for the rest of my life. But before continuing to make vlogs every week, I needed to take a break. This is why I went on a three month hiatus back in March. I wanted to answer a very important question first. What did I want to talk about in my vlogs? Vlogs 1 to 13 were entirely dedicated to social media problems and promoting notice. And though these were interesting topics, it became depressing very quick. The social media space is particularly dark and frustrating. And when you have to be constantly researching and talking about it, it really quickly starts weighing on you. I don't want to keep talking about Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg, cyberbullying, human information trafficking and trolls. I wanted to talk about the things that I actually loved, the things that inspire me, that challenge me, strengthen me, comfort me, the things that make me, me. I, I wanted to identify what those were and only focus on that. And I was able to. The topics I determined would be interesting to me were theology and history. It may feel like a weird transition, right? Moving from technology and social media to theology and history. Well, to me, it's not that weird. It actually is a natural transition to me. I am a Christian. I've always enjoyed theology. I have no formal theological education. I have no plan to become a pastor or theologian. But as a Christian, I agree with the Westminster Shorter Catechism when it states that the reason for my existence is to glorify God and enjoy Him forever. In order to glorify and enjoy God, I first need to know God. And that's where theology comes in play. Theology comes from the Greek term for the study of God. Now, of course, you can't study God like you'd study a rat in a lab. God is in a superior realm of existence, far beyond nature and science, far above our comprehension. But God is also humble and pleased to reveal himself to us. And that self-revelation can be studied. As a matter of fact, it should be. Theology, as it remains under the authority of the Bible, of Scripture, enables me to apply my mind to understanding who God is and what He's like. It helps me know more about God, and the more I know about God, the more I know God. And the more I know God, the more I can enjoy Him. Which is the purpose of my existence to begin with. Now, history has always fascinated me. Learning about people and events in the past is something I would love to do for a living if I could. I want to dive into the complexity of the events that fashion the world we live in and discuss how they help determine our future. I am from the Congo in Africa and knowing that my country's history is not super well known makes me think that there may be a chance to make interesting and original content in the future dedicated to that. 
I will strive to make shorter digestible vlogs. This vlog is the last long vlog I'll make. I promise there's just a lot to talk about right now, but I'll try to keep the next ones under seven minutes. I'll try to complement them with illustrations, quotes, references, and that's a novelty, original songs. You may not know that about me, but I know a few chords on the guitar and I write songs. And I'd be excited to share them with you as well. I'm also going to release two vlogs a week, I think. One in English and one in French. I think it makes sense because French is my first language and many of my family and friends only speak French. I happen to live in Quebec too and French is what we speak here. So yes, I'll keep making vlogs. For my personal growth, obviously, but hopefully also to benefit others. But something is going to end about the way I've been publishing vlogs. Quite simply, the next vlogs won't be available on social media anymore. They won't be on Facebook, they won't be on Instagram, they won't be on YouTube, they won't be on TikTok, they won't be on Twitter, they won't be on WhatsApp. And the reason for that is quite simple. After all the research I've done on these platforms, after what I know they do to people, it would be against my conscience to continue engaging with them. Uh, it would really feel like I'm feeding the monster. As a matter of fact, this post is one of my last interaction with any of these platforms. And that includes uh, WhatsApp. For those of you who have my email or phone number, you'll know how to reach me. But for everyone else, I guess I have to say farewell. If you think it's excessive, I encourage you to check out any of my previous vlogs or articles. I think they pretty much explain my reasoning here. It's truly the end of an era for me because social media has really been a huge part of my world. But this is something I've longed to do for years and I see this as a profound relief to realize that I'll never have to interact again with these platforms. I'm going to post my content on notice exclusively from now on. If you'd be interested to see the content I'm creating, I would love for you to join. But before we part ways, I want to give you an idea of the type of content I'm aiming at creating. So here is, for your enjoyment, my very last vlog on the big social media platforms. So I'm starting a new series of vlogs. I'm going to talk about very serious things. I'm going to talk about God and faith, about science and the Bible, about heaven and hell, about Jesus, about justice and sin, about life and death. I'll rely on my personal study of the Bible, but also on systematic theology, something I've come to appreciate as well when it comes to organizing and categorizing some of the things I see in the Bible. As a matter of fact, this new series is going to be called Systematic Theology. But before I do, I want to answer a question you might have in mind already. Why should you listen to me when I talk about these things? How do you know if what I'm saying is true? Again, I'm not an expert, whatever that means. I'm not a doctor in theology. I don't intend to become one. So why would you listen to anything I'm saying? Before I try to answer that question, there's a much more foundational question that needs to be answered first. And that question is what is true? What is real? Philosophers have historically wrestled with that question and come up with a large variety of principles and concepts, uh, systems and methods to address it. Like there are entire disciplines like ontology, epistemology, dedicated to answering these questions. I'm not going to give you a presentation on philosophy here or science. I'm not gonna try to impress you with my knowledge, my speech or my complex ideas. My answer is actually going to be incredibly simple. What is real? What is true? The Word of God. That's it. Period. I could end the vlog here. And I don't put this as a viable option or an interesting perspective to consider. It's the final conclusion. If someone does not agree with that, I respect it. I have to respect it. But it's really their loss. And this could sound incredibly naive or intellectually lazy or arrogant or all of the above, but there is no other answer. Otherwise, I would not be saying this. Here's the reality that I believe none of us can logically deny. To find truth, to find reality, we all need presuppositions. 
we all need assumptions that cannot be proven, but that we deem reliable enough to use as a foundation for any other knowledge we want to gain. Many assume that there is such a thing as logic, such a thing as reason. They will probably assume that empirical knowledge, the scientific method, the observable facts are your best bet at attaining truth. Many assume that there is such a thing as uh, spiritual existence and experiences, thinking about mysticism, ancestral religions, oriental spirituality. Many presuppose that the human mind and conscience is the strongest evidence of existence and a sure foundation of knowledge. Cogito ergo sum. I think therefore I am, as René Descartes would say. Many think that the senses, hearing, seeing, tasting, touching, smelling, are the only sure way to know what's real. Believing is seeing. Well, you'll find that the Bible, the Word of God, when you read it the way it wants to be read, intentionally short circuits all presuppositions that before there is matter and energy, before there are physical senses, before the laws of physics, transcending all concepts and ideas that can be comprehended by the human mind underneath all forms of existence within the fabric of the visible and invisible universe, far beyond the space-time continuum, is one single ultimate reality, God. The fact is that none of our presuppositions make any sense without that ultimate reality, without God. The Apostle John wrote, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. John chapter 1 verse 1 to 3. When John talks about the Word here, he is referring about a reality that is the source and origin of everything that has ever existed or will ever exist. By referring to the Word, he makes the outrageous claim that at the very foundation of existence is not random chance or emptiness or chaos, but intelligence, wisdom, creative and preserving power, and personhood. The Word of God is the origin of our universe, characterized by space and time, containing matter and energy, and its infinite vastness and smallness. And God, the Word of God, wrote the Bible. He used human ha hands and minds to write this book, obviously, but he also very much inspired it. Which means that this book is true. Now, is this blind faith? Is this fideism? The definition of fideism is the belief that knowledge depends on faith and revelation, not on logic, not on evidence. Fideism is dangerous because it ignores evidence. It's irrational. With fideism, you could believe in God, but you could also just as well believe in a flying spaghetti monster. It claims that faith is independent of reason, evidence, or logic. That's an inaccurate view of faith. Faith embraces reason. Faith relies on evidence. Faith is a response to truth. And belief in the Word of God doesn't mean that you ignore reality. On the contrary, it means that you've approached the Bible with intellectual honesty and sincerity, and you've reached a rational conclusion that it is trustworthy. What evidence, though, is there that the Word of God, the Bible, is true? There are so many. I could not even begin to list them all for you here. I'll just give you the most compelling one. The Apostle John went on to write, The Word became flesh. John chapter 1 verse 14. John states here that the Word of God, the transcendent being, the ultimate reality, the sovereign person who creates and rules all things, became a man of flesh and bones. Like we actually know his name. His name was Jesus. He was born and lived about 2,000 years ago in Roman-occupied Palestine. He walked. He talked. His actions and words were recorded. People could see him, hear him, touch him. He was arrested, tortured, crucified, dead, buried. And then he came back to life. This is the evidence of all evidence. It's tangible, it's embodied, it's real. If it were false, it would have been debunked a long time ago. But after 2000 years and many attempts, no one has succeeded at myth busting as it were. The young carpenter of Nazareth. 
And when someone has faith in Him, when someone trusts Him, it's not blind faith. It's just a natural response to truth, to evidence, to reality. It's simply recognizing the authority of Scripture and of the one who wrote it and who testifies to it. But that's not the entire reason that led me to believe. I had heard and read about Jesus a long time before I started believing. It took more than intellectual understanding for me to actually commit to that belief. I had to come in contact with the life, the reality, the presence of the risen Jesus Christ. It was in the summer of 2005. I was waiting for my mother to come and pick me up from a friend's house. I was alone and bored when suddenly something new occurred in my consciousness. I became aware of a reality of an existence that I had never perceived before. A friend later told me it was probably just an epiphany or of some sort. I don't know if I would call it that way. All I know is that from that moment onward, my eyes were open to the reality that transcends all realities. Something stronger than my biggest fears, something lovelier than my sweetest dreams, something more real than life and death. This knowledge felt so real, so true, that it felt futile and ridicule to doubt it. As a matter of fact, I wasn't the one really testing it, it was testing me. Like, I was the one who could be false. That's what it felt like. And I shouldn't say it. It was a he. He was a person. I could not see him, I could not hear him, but as real as my feet were touching the ground, I was in his presence, face to face. And it wasn't subjective make-believe. Though I have never had that experience before, never met him before, I objectively recognized who that this was. My parents had told me about him, I had read about him, I had listened to pastors talk about him every Sunday, I had watched movies about him. And there, I had finally met him. I became acquainted with the reality of who he is. I perceived the power, the honor, the majesty, the righteousness, the justice, the moral excellence. I sensed the confidence, the knowledge, the wisdom. I also felt the humility, the compassion, and the love. I shared in a joy that was not mine, a joy that doesn't belong to this universe as it is, I believe. An indestructible joy that only someone who has all power, who has defeated all his enemies and rival, who has immortality, who is seated next to the father he loves, can have. I met him and I was never the same again. But let's get back to my original question. Why should you listen to me? Uh, I don't know that you can ever be sure that I'm right. I'm fallible, I fail. I don't claim to have special knowledge. I also have to rely on sources to attain truth like my parents, teachers, past. But I also know that I met the one who is always right. I met the one who is called the word of God. I met the one who is truth himself and I know him. And when you get the chance to know truth himself, how do I put this? You don't shut up. You speak about him and I will. It's not as important to me how many people are listening. I just gotta speak. And those who really want to hear, who really want to know, will know if I'm right or not. Before finishing up, I wanted to share with you the Apostles' Creed, which is a great summary of the substance of my faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Here's a song I wrote about my faith, about what I believe in. I call it Creed because it's loosely based off the Apostles' Creed. I'm going to play it for you and then this will be it. Thank you.
given the power Maker of the heavens And all their shining hosts Creator of all things down here Even Jesus, the everlasting Word, eternally begotten Son of God, announced by the prophets, conceived by the Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, a man. This is the truth of God revealed This is the anchor for my faith And though the sky may fall, the earth give way I believe This is my creed, my joy, my song This is the anthem of my life and when the darkness comes, all hope is lost, I believe. I believe he suffered under Pontius Pilate, rested, crucified, dead and buried. A rose on the third day ascended into heaven sat at God's right hand as Lord of all oh and I believe he's coming on that glorious day to judge both the living and the dead Righteous King of Glory, the one who hates all evil, peace and justice thrive under his rule. This is the truth of God revealed, this is the anchor for my faith. And though the sky may fall, the earth give way, I believe. This is my creed, my joy, my song. This is the anthem of my life. And when the darkness comes, and all hope is lost, I believe. of our Lord I believe you've come to dwell in us to witness to the truth to raise the holy church and to reveal the excellence of Christ And I believe our sins, oh, through Jesus' sacrifice, have all been forgiven, washed away. And all have believed, will rise up from the grave, and join in Jesus' everlasting life I'll join in Jesus everlasting life